Hi, everyone. Um, I want to start off by saying if you are interested in Microsoft Word, there may be a time when you remember using a typewriter and paper. Think of Microsoft Word as the typewriter and the paper without the physical devices. Okay? So get rid of the typewriter, get rid of the paper. You're now doing this all electronically on your app. This is actually the Word application. And I'm going to talk to you for a second about this product notice. My license has expired, which is relevant to the presentation. I'm just not interested in renewing it yet. Microsoft Word, again, it's a tool that you would use to perhaps type um, essays or documents or formalized letters as opposed to email. Obviously, you can print them out and then snail mail. You can file them electronically on your device and then attach them to emails. So the point of Microsoft Word is to use it for the purposes that it is intended, which is for documents, okay, creating your own documents. Some versions of Word will look different. And that's because the menus can change, the little icons across the top may change, depending on the version you're using. The basic functionality is going to be found under Home and Insert. Those are typically the two areas. I always like to tell people, when in doubt, go home. Okay? Go home. That's where you're going to find your most common icons. So the tools, when you open a document, it's going to open a blank document, or depending on the version of Word that you have, there are templates that come installed. Do you want a calendar? Do you want a formalized letter? If you don't see what you're looking for, the nice thing about the newer versions is that you can type something right into this search bar. So if you're looking for a business letter, you can type that in and it will give you some options. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. I just want to go back to the presentation. So basically, again, think of the paper inside the typewriter. You just start by typing a simple sentence. Don't worry about formatting as you go along, okay? You can just start typing and you can hit return when it's necessary, etc. okay? Word is intelligent enough to recognize that after a period, I didn't hit my caps, the first word is going to be capitalized. Okay, so there are some built-in intelligence things going on here. Just start typing, then start playing with the menus. The first menu item that we're going to talk about, oh, by the way, I'm on a Windows machine. Under a Mac, it's going to look, again, a little bit different, but always remember, go home. When in doubt, go home. Now, if you've got an old legal version of Microsoft Word on your machine, and I do insert the word legal version, you can upgrade it to the newer version, which is now Microsoft 365. So Microsoft used to use um, version acronyms like uh, Word 2007, Word 2010, Word 2006, everything is, the newest versions are now Microsoft 365. It's a name. That's it. Okay. It comes with a lot of additional toys as part of the entire family of Microsoft products under the 365 umbrella. But if you've got an addition, if, sorry, if you've got a legal license of Word, or any Microsoft product on your machine, you can upgrade. 
at no additional cost. If you bought a one-time purchase of Microsoft Office, which is what I had done at one time, you can still upgrade, but it is going to be a cost to you. And Microsoft being Microsoft no longer is a one-and-done kind of shop. It's based on a subscription basis. So, for instance, you notice that mine needs to be reactivated. There's a problem with the device's license status. Just as a side note, folks, I can ignore this forever. All right? It's not going to fry my machine. It's not going to kick me out of work. I can ignore this message, but it's not the right thing to do because I'm not being able to take advantage of some of the other bells and whistles that come with the full licensed product. So when I feel like it, it's very simple. If you have any issues with your current version and you want to upgrade to the latest and greatest, it's all done from the file menu. And you can check all the way down to where it says account. And right here is where I can update now. I can view the updates that are available for me, or I can learn what kind of updates are available. Learning more about them or viewing just the ones I want. It's all going to take you to a Microsoft website where it's going to explain about what you're going to get. Okay? I'm not going to go into too much more information about the licensing. I just want to make you aware that if you've got an old version, you can upgrade by going to your file menu and either going to the account option. If you've got a very old version of Word, you may not have the account option available to you. You might have just the options. You might have just an about listed here. And if you do, you can go through that as well. Microsoft is a suite of products. It's Word, it's Excel, it's PowerPoint. Those are the three main ones that we're all concerned about. It's Outlook, if you use Outlook. So there's a lot of different options to go with. So we're going to focus on a couple of the menu items to start with. I'm going to go back to that blank document. As I said, always go home. One of the nice things about the latest version of Microsoft uh, Office, the 365 version, is that it offers a syncing, a synchronization between your PC and a cloud storage of your stuff. So that's a really cool feature of the 365 version. The other cool feature is the automatically saved. So this document has been automatically saved. It does not have a name, but if for some reason something happens and I lose power with no battery and the document's gone, it has automatically been saved to this PC. But at some point, frequently, you should always save your documents the first time and you should save it somewhere where you're going to remember where it is and you're supposed to give it a name. Okay? Once you've saved it, it shows up here. Oops, sorry. It shows up in the top as to what the name of the document is. Subsequent changes that I make are automatically saved with the name that I gave it. All right, under home, like I said, you want to make your documents look pretty, you can highlight. You can bold, you can italicize, you can underline, you can change the color of the text, you can change the background color of whatever's highlighted. You can do all your cosmetic things up here. You can change the font style. 
you can change the font size. These two little buttons are very handy. The A with the down arrow, the A with the up arrow, and it keeps going smaller and smaller and smaller. I think it goes down to, yep, tiny little, can't even see it. Lots of bells and whistles in here. The, the, the thing I would recommend, guys, is start a garbage document like I've just done. Start a garbage document and play with some of the features. The next item we want to talk about is the layout. Now, I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. Down in the bottom right of your screen, you're always going to see this zoom bar. You can go much smaller. You can go bigger. Okay. The layout is going to give you the option to change the orientation. Microsoft Word always defaults to portrait. If you want to change to landscape mode, that's where you do it. Microsoft Word also allows you the options to change your margins, including customizing the margins. But I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit differently. One of the things that I noticed that's not in the presentation is the view menu. And I like the view menu for one main reason. This right here, the ruler. Now I'm going to turn mine off. And I want you to now watch the side. And I'm going to turn it back on. The nice thing about the ruler is that it shows you what your margins are from left to right and top and bottom. Now, if you go way back to school and headers and footers, does anybody remember headers and footers? So headers and footers, this gray area that you're seeing here on the bottom right of my machine, that's the footer area. If you want to get into that space, the simplest way to do it is to just take your mouse down there and double click. And now you see that I've got something in the footer. This is where people normally put page numbers. They might put footnotes, etc. Okay? You want to get back into the body of the document? Just double click inside. Similarly with the header, just double click inside and we start over. This gray space up here designates your header. You want to get in there. And remember, anything, whoops, anything that appears in the header will be on every single page. Okay? Remember your essays. Now, left and right margins. Again, the simplest way to change the margins, you can do it from the layout and you can customize your margins, or you can just take your mouse and carefully hover. I'm gonna do this one first because it's easier. Carefully hover between the white and the gray, and I can drag it all the way over. Now, the right, sorry, the left margin is a little bit tougher to do because it's got three pieces. It's got a first line indent, it's got a hanging indent, and the left indent. And I'm waiting, whoops, hovering until I see the double-sided arrow, and I can slide it over. If you don't like it that way, again, you can go and customize your margins. The top, the bottom, the left, and the right, you can change it. It's always in one inch increments. Click OK, and you can see the margins are widened again. And I apologize if I'm going too fast, but I just wanted to point out, like I said, under View, my recommendation is turn on your ruler. Always turn on your ruler. The other thing under View that I find very handy is the print layout shows you what it's going to look like when and if it prints, more of an easier way 
to get a full screen look at the document. But once again, when in doubt, go home. Lots of different tools up here if you want to create headers or sorry, certain styles of documentation. You can see I'm just hovering over these and it's automatically changing. Back to the presentation, we talked about the layout, changing margins, changing orientation. If you want to add columns, that's all done from the layout as well. You can add up to three or more if you need to. But one of the biggest things, again, always remember to save. If you have an older version of Microsoft Word, you're going to have to manually remember to save one of two ways. There's an icon that always looks like a little diskette up here. You can click it, or you can go back to File and Save. There's information in the presentation about creating tables and charts, smart art, when in doubt, go home. There's information about how to share, which is really cool because if you've got a document and you want to send it by email to someone, there's two ways to do it. You can compose an email. You can compose an email to somebody and then attach the document the old fashioned way via your email with the little, can't see it down here, I have to move this out. Okay, with the little paper clip. Or Microsoft allows you to do it right from the document. So you can go share and you can attach a copy of the Word document, or you can even attach a copy of a PDF. And if you're not familiar with the PDF, the PDF is an uneditable version. If you send the Word document, people can make changes to it. Uh, that's good, bad, or indifferent. It's up to you. If you send a copy of the PDF, they can't make changes to you. So if you send a copy of a Word document, I don't have Outlook set up for myself because I use Gmail. But it could take you directly to your email and then it would automatically attach the document. There's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. You have documents on your system. File open. Remember I said when we saved the document, I told you that one of the most important things to do is to remember where you save it to. The reason you want to remember where you've saved it is so that a week or two or a month or a year later, you remember where to get it from. So when you open a document, where are you looking? Think of a file cabinet. The old fashioned file cabinet, right? You open a drawer, where's that piece of paper you're looking for? Did you file it properly? Did you file it intelligently so that you can remember where it was? If you don't know where it was, the new versions of Microsoft Word allow you the option to do a quick search. So if you're looking for something that has the word board in it, can't find anything, let me go and search my entire computer. So I'm searching this PC. Whoops, not in the downloads. I'm going to search the entire PC. Sorry. Documents, everything goes under documents. I think it's there. I'm going to look for board. Whoops. This one's not working. Sorry, guys. Must be because of where I'm searching. But that's one of the, I've used it before. It does work. You want to go back? Quick way to go back is this little arrow that's facing left or 
remember, go home. Always go home. You can find your documents that you just started working on recently. That's the other nice thing about Word. It shows you the last 10, yeah, 10 documents, I think, that you've worked on recently. So even if it's been a long time, it may still show up in this list. I've got one from March 22nd that's still showing in my open list. So that's kind of handy. Back to this. What I'm going to recommend to you guys, because there's so much, keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Start with a blank document. Play with the features. and. If and when you get stuck, and I still get stuck, and I've been using Word for many, many, many years. When and if you get stuck, one of the best resources is YouTube or just Google how to do it. But I'll often go to YouTube and I'll type something in how to create a table in Word, how to create columns. And it'll walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions. Simple ways is to think logically about what you're trying to do. If you want to insert a table, chances are it's going to be under the insert menu. If you want to draw a picture, chances are it's going to be under the draw. If you want to change the layout, of course it's under layout. If you're in doubt, go home. If you want to insert something into your diagram or into your document, like a picture, there's stock images that you can choose from. I think what we're trying to do here for you, though, is to give you an idea of what Word can do for you. No more typewriter, no more paper, no more whiteout. You make a mistake, put your cursor over it, and just backspace. 